Welcome back, everybody, to Anointed to Bling. It's your girl here, Rain. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome aboard. And if you're not, thanks for joining me as always. We're doing a little bit of something different today. I had to take a break from doing wedding stuff just to stay fresh, so I decided I would go back to doing a pair of shoes. Now, you know I'm a blinger, so of course I bling out shoes and customize them for people and brides and gals and birthday girls. But today I wanted to try something different. I saw some inspiration on Pinterest and decided I'm going to try my hand at painting. Now, I've never done this before. I don't know if it'll be a pass or fail. You tell me. But you know it's coming up and you can see it all right here, right now. First things first, we always have to talk supply. So if you're gonna paint a pair of shoes, you obviously need a pair of shoes. So I am going to show you the ones that I got. Now for the design that I wanna do, it was best for me to get the white on white. And that is simply where the Fila sign is in white on these because I wanna customize them. Now normally, if you buy a white pair, the Fila letters are red and blue. So if you want to paint your own, you wanna consider that. And so I ended up picking these up at I believe uh, kids foot locker now in kids I can wear a seven so if your foot is bigger than a nine woman's well kids shoes won't necessarily work for you and they're not always cheaper these were the same size as if I had purchased them in women's and or men's now the men's size for me is also a seven and it was a little bit too big, too wide for my foot, so it was better to go kids. This is a popular color, believe it or not, so it is sometimes really hard to find in the store depending on where you are located. Now, the last time I tried to paint shoes, it was a complete and total disaster because I had no clue what I was doing. So I did a little research this time because I realized you can't just use acrylic paint and I wanna show you the products that I'm using. If you watch people do this on YouTube or anywhere else, how did those get in there? Then you know that Angelus is the shoe painting brand and I started out with the uh, starter kit and so that comes with these paint brushes you also receive some easy cleaner to clean your shoes before you get started assuming they're not brand new they send you a nice little brush as well and you get a choice of three colors of paint and I just got the ones that were recommended I got the white I got the black and I got the gift box blue. I just kept that as it was listed on the site. Now on the site, it does actually let you customize what colors you actually want. So you're not obligated to those three colors, but if you know anything about painting, then you know that black and white is a necessity. Also, I got this acrylic finisher. Now I chose not to get the satin. I got this in the natural because I really did not want a shine shine, but I also wasn't sure how matte the matte was. So there are some options when you purchase this you can choose what finisher you want at no extra cost again it's a part of that startup kit then of course you need this which is the leather preparer and deglazer so when you buy new shoes before you paint them you want to make sure that you take off the finish so that the paint will adhere now if you don't want to purchase this although it does come in the starter kit oops you can also use um nail polish remover or regular acetone you don't want to use a whole lot because you don't want to destroy the leather shoe but that is another option and you can usually find it in bigger quantities the other thing that i purchased was a set of 12 colors and i'll show them to you now this was separate and this was about 30 dollars, and I, the startup kit was about 23 don't quote me on that um 
definitely look on their their website and you'll see um, so I ended up getting pink now they allow you to customize the colors that you want and I thought it was going to be important for me to get mostly primary colors for the design that I'm doing so there you can see the purple and I traded out for this Grinch green because remember if you buy the starter kit as well you get three colors as well so I didn't need the black white or gift blue that came in the original advertised kit and I got this cute orange the yellow and these colors are really really rich you guys they're really really rich another pink which is hot pink blue turquoise and remember you don't always have to get certain colors you know you you can always mix this is metallic gold you can always mix with the black and white to make a color lighter or darker so just remember that you don't have to buy every pink that they sell this is the blue the red the metallic silver and finally the green so that was a nice little kit to get and it also comes in four ounce bottles it's a little bit more expensive um, for that particular kit but they do let you customize and you you can even mix and match whether you get one ounce in this color or four ounces in another so that's really really cool and fairly reasonable so now that I've shown you the supplies we're gonna go ahead and start to prepare the shoe just by way of pre-planning, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and figure out what design you actually want on the shoe. You've got to know in advance what you want to paint and what you don't want to paint and where your color placement is going to be. So I went ahead and I started out by taping off the shoe. Because I'm not painting the entire shoe, there was really no need for me to strip the entire shoe with the deglazer. So I'm only going to deglaze the areas that I'm going to paint so as not to waste the product. So I know that I'm going to paint the tongue, but I'm going to leave this part white so I went ahead and covered that because I don't need to actually strip it and I'm just going to paint around that as well as these areas in here so these are going to be my areas again that I'm going to deglaze now when it comes to this part of the shoe as well as the feel sign you want to tape and use your exacto knife to just kind of cut around that you want to apply a little bit of pressure but not too much pressure because you don't want to cut into the leather of the shoe again don't cut the leather of the shoe here, I'm not going to paint this. I'm going to leave it white. So I made sure to tape that off. I'm not going to deglaze that. Now, one note, I do have to take this tape off because I am going to be painting in between that Fila sign with whatever color goes in here. So that's that's something I've got to take off. Um, and yeah, fix that. But other than that, make sure that you tape off the areas that you're not going to paint. All right. And I went ahead and filled the inside of the shoe with the paper that came with it, as well as the shoe insert and did some taping on the inside just to make sure that I don't make a mess with the paint. Now, the good thing about the paint is it is water based. So if you get some somewhere you don't want it to be nice little toothbrush or even a Q-tip and some warm water will definitely take that right off. But you want to be careful and you want to work with as steady of a hand as possible. Again, we're hand painting and not airbrushing. So this is all taped off. I still have to do the other shoe. I did not get this taping part on camera because it took me almost an hour. Oh my God, just to get things taped and cut. So I may get some clips of taping the other shoe, but this is how mine came out for the design that I am using. So let's go ahead and deglaze. Here's a tip guys, after fully painting the first shoe, you wanna make sure that you tape even down in here and press that tape in to just cover this part so that that stays white and you don't contaminate it with other colors. So I went ahead and painted the first shoe and now I'm gonna show you how I'm painting this one. But before I do, I'm just making sure that I'm reinforcing all of that tape because taping is critical if you want a clean and neat shoe. And after it taking me hours to paint the first one, I thought I would just go back and reinforce uh, for you that you really have to take this well and make sure you cover all these little edges. Don't overlook those. I'm an over explainer. So what you see me here is I'm doing what I was just telling you, showing you how I taped it off. Fortunately, I have the benefit of fingernails so I can press that tape down into that lip. It does lift a little bit away from the shoe to allow me to do that. Just be careful when you pull that tape off after you paint that you don't pull the paint off too. But I wanted to cover that because after I painted the first one, it looked a little splotchy as I got up close to that edge there. So I decided this time around to go ahead and cover that to the best of my ability. Now we're going to deglaze. As I said earlier, all you need is a cotton swab or a tile and you just want to run this over the leather. You can see the finish coming off. You don't want to rub it too much. You don't want to apply too much. Just get the top coat off so that the paint will stick. And you, if you don't have this, you can also use fingernail polish remover or straight up acetone. Again, you don't need a whole lot. You're just taking off 
the original finish so that the paint will stick and it won't peel off, okay? Now I put some newspaper down inside the shoe because I'm gonna start by painting the tongue. If you don't have to paint the tongue, don't, because it is pretty difficult and it will bleed if you're not careful, but I wanted to paint the tongue and I'm glad that I did, so I just wanted to protect that. And I'm just showing you again how I taped that off and why I put the paper in there before we paint with that red. So I like this particular red, it's really bright, and I'm just taking that circular brush that came in the kit and I'm painting as close as I can to the edging there as you can see and I just want to get that nice and saturated now it does uh, go on opaque this particular color so you do need a few coats of this and so I'm just running that along the tongue along that paper protecting it takes a lot of patience you need a really steady hand and then once you do each coat you want to take a blow dryer or a heat, heat gun excuse me like I'm doing here and dry each coat don't try to keep painting and adding coats because it's just going to continue to streak and show your paintbrush strokes. Now, you don't have to do this part, but if you're doing this for a client, I recommend that you do if you're going to paint the tongue. I'm pulling it completely over, painting that, and then drying it as I go because I want to make sure that it's perfect, all right? This is just me, but nobody's really going to see it. Now, you see I got a little bit of red on that white. So once I let it dry, I'm taking this white paint, and I'm just painting over that with a really fine tip brush. It was actually an old makeup lip liner brush or eyeliner brush because I didn't have a really fine one and then I'm just drying that so when I paint the yellow it's gonna really cover that all right here's the green and again it goes on like the red very sheer and opaque as you can see here so you're gonna need a few coats you want to dry again after each coat don't worry about little mistakes because as you paint the next layer you can always fix that this paint is really good for covering up the last one this yellow, you guys, is astounding. I was not expecting this to go on as clean, thick, and bright as it did. I would use this paint for a bunch of projects because it's absolutely perfect. So I'm using that round brush, and I'm going in and just painting that. There it is, fully painted. Still looks a mess because it's all taped up. I have to take the tape off, but not too bad for the first try. I cannot complain. So now we're going to paint these letters using that fine tip brush. Just remember when you're using the paint on the stitching, you just want to dot it on because it does bleed immediately. And I made a little bit of a mistake, as you will see in just a second. But not to worry, I was able to go back and fix that with the white once it dried. All right, so you just want to be careful with that. The next step once you get those letters done is going to be to go ahead and put the finish on. Now, I purchased the normal finish. You might not like the shininess, but I went ahead and I put this acrylic finisher all over the shoe because I ended up painting the whole shoe after I made a bit of a mess. All right, so that's why I did the whole entire shoe, a couple of coats. Here is the finished look. Now, as I said, it is a little bit shiny because I did use a couple of coats. So if I had to do this over, I would probably do, do two things differently. I would get the matte finisher so that it's not as shiny, um, just to keep things kind of flat like a normal tennis shoe looks. And then for that green, I probably would have mixed it with the white just to brighten up that green a little bit more. Now it's really gloomy out today and I'm outside, so you don't really get the full effect of the brightness of the shoe but in the sunlight this thing looks amazing now it isn't perfect because it's hand painted so you're gonna see a few little bitty flaws and you know after a while you just get tired of going back and painting over things and fixing it you just accept it for what it is dog on it the more you do it the better you get but this was really fun and again you know i always tell you that the work of our hands are blessed so absolutely you can make this a business and i plan to do this a lot more you tell me if it was a pass or fail because you know i'm gonna do this again until next time be blessed guys <laughs>